Next up for part four, I have Onimusha Bariden, or as it's called in America, Onimusha Blade Warriors. Uh, this here is the Japanese version. So Onimusha is like a third person hack and slash mixed with like survival horror uh, elements, so to speak, of feudal Japan era samurai versus demons kind of stuff. Well, after four games of that, um, Onimusha 1, 2, 3, and Dawn of Dreams, they just, or maybe this is before Dawn of Dreams, I forget, they decided to make Onimusha Blade Warriors, which is like a up to four player party fighter game where you have different like levels of elevation, items to pick up and throw, and a lot of people say it's Smash Bros, but with Onimusha. That's like maybe half true, because it has all the mechanics of Onimusha, so you can like intercept people before they hit you, you can, um parry people, you have battles where you go to absorb souls and they try to absorb them faster than you. So, on the baseline level it has Smash influences, but it's really just Onimusha put into a, f a party fighter in the truest, truest like sense of the words. Or truest sense of form or whatever, but it's alright. Um, the Japanese menus are extremely hard to navigate in this version compared to a lot of games I own, so I don't play it often, but I intend to make a, a breakthrough at some point. Uh, next two games on the list, um, I have basically the same thing twice. I have Dead or Alive 2 and then Dead or Alive 2 Hardcore. This is the Japanese version. Um, there's a bit of history behind this. The developer of this game basically was asked to give a tech demo um, to this one guy, and then the guy took his game when it was still in beta and just released it anyway against his will. So that's how we... That little spec is hilarious. I don't think she's supposed to have a mole. No, that's a speck of dust in there. Fucking funny. Um, so this Dead or Alive 2 Vanilla is actually like a beta, unfinished version of Hardcore, full with glitches and everything. Hardcore is the finished game that came to actualization later on for the launch of the PS2 uh, in America later on. Um, it's good. It's damn good. 3D fighting game. A lot of people would be like, oh, it's the sexy titty meme game. But there's actually more guys in this game than women, though it does have that. There's an aid slider that is actually a titty shake slider. And if you're at year, year 17, they shake less than at year 99. So put that all the way up. There's also a special version, Dead or Alive 2 Hardcore Extreme or Complete or something. But that was only for the Xbox because the developer was a tard that believed... Well, he, he got into all the hype of the Xbox stronger than the PS2, even though no one cared to really, like, you know, release shit for it. Um, this is the only Tekken game I own. I'm not the biggest Tekken fan. I've never liked the way the people feel when they move. I always felt like the weight was off. I don't like the dash system in Tekken. But that being said, I acknowledge that it's a pinnacle of 3D fighting games. I used to have the OG Tekken and Long Box, but I sold it like a fool. Same with Loose Discs of 2 and 3. Um, it's good. Tekken 4 is the black sheep, but I still recommend playing it. It has the airport theme, among other amazing soundtracks that are some of the best in video game history, I think. Um, decently fun. I'm not a big Tekken guy. I plan on picking up Tekken 5 at some point soon, because I hear that one's damn good. Um, this is what the Dead or, Dead or Alive 2 case came in for the Japanese version. However, inside of it is what I'm currently storing. Uh, one of the best fighting games of all time, Capcom vs. SNK2, 2001, Mark of the Millennium, win an arcade, no, I'm kidding. Um, Capcom vs. SNK, SNK roster, Capcom roster, and they duke it out, then you, you can choose from six different fucking groove styles, C, A, P, S, N, K, and they all play drastically different depending on which one you pick, um, Cap plays like from different Capcom games and SNK grooves play like different SNK games as you would expect. My only complaint is that Capcom once again did that shit where most of their representatives are from Street Fighter, even though they have so many to choose from. No Red Earth, there is literally one representative from Darkstalkers, uh, Morgan, there's one dude from Rival Squ Schools, Kiyosuke, and no one else, even though that's an entire IP. So, a lot of unused potential, but at the same time, SNK has a crap ton of King of Fighters characters, but at least they have variety among Fatal Fury, King of Fighters, Samurai Showdown, etc. This game is really fun to play, awesome music, has that stellar meme, this is the tune with bacon like there's just a lot to love about this game it's hard as hell though if you're not good at fighting games be careful this is not the recommend recommended introductory but once you start feeling it get into this game
All right, we're almost done. Only a few more games left. Next up on the list, I have Guilty Gear X2. I sold my first copy of Guilty Gear. I have no idea why I regret it, but Guilty Gear X2 just kind of plays like Guilty Gear X, but just better. It dials it up. The art style is amazing. The gameplay is great. Easy to pick up. Hard to master. Roman cancels are fucking fun. I like playing as Venom. He's like this guy that plays with pool cues, pool balls. He's a real mean set player. But you got a lot of unique characters from something like Slayer to Eno. Pretty much has anything anybody could be looking for and a bunch of characters you'd never see in any other kind of style of game. Stylization is big with this, with the metal sub theme. Heaven or hell, dual one, let's rock! It feels good. Last, uh, second to last game is Soul Calibur 2. Soul Calibur 2 is a lot of what people describe as one of the best fighting games of all time, but usually that's, to my opinion, for more casual fighting game fans, and that's fine, because this game is competitively casual in the truest sense of the word. I don't have the GameCube version, I prefer the PS2 because I like Hihachi. Pardon me for being an asshole, but I think the GameCube controller is horribly optimized, a very disgusting controller, and bad for fighting games, and them putting Link in the game does not make that up for me. I also find that he looks like he's very unfitting for the rest of the universe, and it's kind of an immersion and flavor fail. I'm not a drone, so I'm not just going to blindly be like, oh, that's the best one. I have my preferences. I like this one with Hihachi the most. Um... It's just a damn good game. Weapon Master Mode will keep you playing for a while. There's tons of weapons to unlock it. It's just a good time all the way through. 